Hello you amazing hackers, it's great having you back again. Today I have a little bit of a special video for you because I'm not going to be giving you much bug bounty tips. I'm going to be talking a bit about how much you can make uh, while doing bug bounty hunts. So um, first things first, a lot of people have came to me and said to me, well I found a lot of dupes, I have a lot of duplicates. Uh, one thing I want to tell you guys, in the bug bounty world we have this uh, sentence, we have this motto get a bounty or get experience. So when you get a duplicate please don't be sad. It happens a lot, a duplicate is a valid bug. It means you're doing something right, so keep doing what you're doing. Life is a grind, when you want to become a good hacker you have to be able to, uh, to try harder, you know, you have to be able to just go to the edge and you never know how close you are to some really juicy box, so you have to just keep on trying. Now straight up, I'm going to give you guys the numbers because I know some of you are just interested in how much you can make. So in Europe, when you're a full-time bug bounty hunter, you can make, when you're at the top of the top, you can make about $10,000, uh, 10, euros every three months. So um, I'm saying this for every three months because I know that the bug bounty world is sporadic in its payouts. You won't make money every month per se because it can take a long time before the developers take up a bug to fix it. So that's the first thing I want to tell you guys. Uh, when you're on the low end you can expect some swag. Now uh, when you're on my bracket, um, I'm not the top of the top, I'm not low end either, uh, I'm somewhere in between. I make about a paycheck every three months so I do this in my spare time I do this about three maybe four hours a day um, and I make a paycheck every month so um, that's pretty much the numbers now I want to go some a little bit deeper into some of the aspects of bug bounty hunting and how you can start making money with bug bounty hunting because I know that's something a lot of you guys are interested in now I'm going to be talking about the motivation a little bit and I'm going to be giving you guys a realistic plan that you guys can follow. It's a little bit realistic, uh, for me at least. Now of course you can adjust this to what you're used to and what you like. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter, you can do anything you like with it. So let's start with the motivation. Why are you actually bug bounty hunting? In my opinion there are a, a couple of things that you can uh, bug bounty hunt for, uh, a few things that you like. Of course money, a lot of people go for it for the money, that's something I cannot deny. Um, you can go uh, try and get some experience, you can try and get better, uh, you can try and get fame, you can try and get famous. Google for example has a hall of fame for its bug bounty hunters that found a successful bug something I would really like to get into, so I'm trying to point my arrows at Google right now. <laughs> uh, and of course you can also try some swag. If you, for example, hack the Dutch government, you get a shirt that says I hacked the Dutch government and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Really cool. You should, tr yeah, if you're an et ethical hacker, you should really try it sometime. Um, now, the first tip I want to give you guys as a bug bounty hunter, I have a couple of tips for you as well in this video. If you want to start making money, forget about the money. Now I'm going to tell you guys why as well. Um, when I started out, I just wanted to see what it was like, if I could do it, if I could get better, uh, if I could grow myself. Um, and I still don't really hunt for the money, I just do it for experience mostly. Now uh, what matters most in bug bounty hunting in my opinion is reputation. Because reputation gets you invites to private programs. So even if you find a duplicate, even if you don't get any money for a bug, if it's a valid bug, you will get reputation, which means that you will get private invites more frequently. Private invites are just private bug bounty programs that are not publicly disclosed, uh, and when you meet specific criteria, you get invited to them. There are a lot less hackers, so it's more opportune to, to find some bugs, uh, and a lot less people have been there before you. So, um, as an absolute beginner, what I would recommend is month 1 through 3, so month 1, 2 and 3, just do vulnerability disclosure programs. Now that means that you won't get any bounty, so you'll go to a website, for example Integrity, and you'll try to find a program that doesn't reward any money. Now why do I say this? As a hacker, I do this as well, 
When I see a bug bounty program that has a lot of money as a payout, I'm more likely to go for that bigger uh, payout than I'm uh, likely to go for the smaller one. And if there's no payout, I'm less likely to go for it. Now that means that there's a lot of opportunity for people who want to go who want to get into bug bounty hunting to actually go for those programs and get the bugs that hackers like us miss that we don't want to spend too much time on. Uh, so what I would recommend is just take three months to do nothing but vulnerability disclosure programs. Ooh, I got disconnected here. Let me just log in again. So just do uh, vulnerability disclosure programs for the first couple of months. And then when you think you're ready, you can, at month four, you can probably get a few uh, private invites by then, by month four. You can actually start exploring them, or when you get them, just start exploring them, see what you can find in them. Now, uh, you'll start to develop a methodology by uh, the fifth month, which is something you should probably do, because your own methodology is going to be a thousand times better than any you can find online. Remember, methodologies that you find online are methodologies that anyone can find. And unless your Google Foo is much, much better than anyone else's, you're probably not going to be the only one finding those things. So uh, making your own methodology by the fifth month is something we would highly recommend. And then by the sixth month, when you've been hunting for a while, then you might expect to see some money come in. Now, it's not going to be a whole lot. Uh, I'm saying this, by the way, for the people who are not really experienced with bug bounty hunting. Uh, these, this is not for the pros, of course. You guys know what to do. But for the people who want the plan, stick to the first couple of months for vulnerability disclosure programs, try to get some reputation, try to get some experience, and then move on to the private invitations that you've gained. Develop your own methodology, and then you can start seeing some money. But it's going to take a while. I've put a six month time frame on this. Uh, put your own time frame on this. I've given you the steps. Uh, but be realistic, that's very important. And as a beginner, forget about money. It's not really the most important thing. I would even say the most important thing is just experience. And I know this is a long time frame, six months, but life is a grind. Take your time. You don't have anything to hurry about. You don't have to be the first one to get there. Uh, unless you're one of the pros, it's not really beneficial to spend a lot of time being the first one. You just have to be the best. So, uh, what I would also recommend is even if you find a low vulnerability, if you find a medium vulnerability, uh, report it. Uh, a lot of people tell you to not report it and to keep it for if something bigger comes along. But if it actually is a valid uh, bug and it, you know it can get accepted, even if it's just a low vulnerability and there's no payout, just report it because it will get you reputation. That reputation is important for the private programs. So that's pretty much what I want to talk about. So the base numbers again, full-time bug bounty hunters in Europe, top of the top. Some of the guys I've worked with, uh, about $10,000 every three months. My bracket, about a paycheck every three months. Uh, and then of course you have the lower end, which gets you swag, which is also awesome. Who wouldn't want a t-shirt saying he hacked the Dutch government? All right, thank you guys for listening, watching. Sorry for the background. I know it's just RuneScape, but I had to have something for the background. Um, I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you next time. Bye.